Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is what challenges do you hope to participate in? Well, short answer, none. I'm, I'm not going to rule out a challenge coming up that I decide, actually, yes, I'd like to do that, but there's nothing that I'm committed to. There's nothing that I'm even considering possibly doing because challenges don't fit where I am. The purpose of challenge is to commit yourself to doing something, something that you wouldn't otherwise do to push yourself that little bit further. But the Goodreads challenge is sheer volume of books, but I've read more than 200 books a year last year. The year before I read over 150, the year before that I read over 200. I, in the period from September until December of the year before, which was when I started on Goodreads, I read nearly a hundred. So I read a huge amount of books. Challenging myself to read 250 books this year instead of 230 doesn't really seem like a meaningful statistic. As it comes to the point that, well, I'm then going, I won't read this epic fantasy that I want to read because I could fit in two novellas. I'm, instead of reading this box set, I'm going to get the books individually so it counts as three rather than one. It comes down to counting it rather than experiencing it. So I don't, I don't really need to push myself to read more. And in terms of pushing myself to read into areas I don't usually read, well, of the 200 and something books I read last year, quite a few of them were written by people who are relatively similar to me, They're Caucasian males in Western Europe or the United States. They're between 25 and 50. So my generation, my race, my area, and my background and so on, they'll tick a lot of those boxes. But also I read a lot of books by women a lot of books by people from other races. I read classics. I read modern books. I read young adult. I read new adult. I read fiction. I read non-fiction. I read science fiction, fantasy, horror, literary fiction, romance. I, I, I could come up with things that I haven't read a statistically significant number of like, for a given measure. I could commit myself to reading books that matched the demographic profile of the world. So if there were X percent of Chinese people on the planet, I'd read X percent of books by Chinese authors. But again, that's a well, is that a valid thing to do? If reading one book by a Chinese author would access a perspective I hadn't necessarily experienced before. Reading two would give me more nuance on that perspective, but reading 30, is that giving me any better a perspective than reading 20? If it isn't, then it's not really fair either to the authors 
or in the more wider ethical perspective, to say, well, I'll read these books not because they're good, not because they'll improve me, but because the author happens to be Chinese. And discriminating on the basis of race isn't a good thing. So doing it purely on the grounds of race so I can tick box on race is a bad thing. So I don't feel the need to push myself beyond that because by default I'm already doing it. And books aren't like press-ups or using the stairs. You can set yourself the goal of doing 20 press-ups a day. And each of those 20 press-ups is the same. Doing 20 press-ups has more benefit than doing one press-up. Doing 30 press-ups has more benefit than doing 20. Once your body's acclimatized enough, you're not damaging yourself. So on. Using the stairs once a week when you could use the lift, it doesn't matter whether you do that on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, but each book is unique. Books are the least generic product, or at least one of the least generic products up there with music and films that you can't replace one book with another and get the same experience. You get a similar experience, but each book is a combination of the author's approach and the idea that the author had and what the editor brought in. So they're bespoke craft items. And there comes a point where reading any book is better than reading a specific book just to meet a tick boxy criteria. So oof. I can see why people do challenges and I think they have value. If you only ever read romances, challenging yourself to read three pieces of literary fiction in a year really expands your perspective. It gives you something of value. It improves your mind. It improves your appreciation of well-written romances because you can see the craft in them. It gives you a better basis to understand what it is about some romances that's better than the other. But similarly, challenging yourself to read 30 books this year is really helpful for those times when you come home from work, you're feeling a little bit tired and you think, well, I just collapse in front of the television with a microwave meal. And you think, well, no, I, I need to hit my 30 books target. So you read a bit more of the book. And because of the way the mind works, once you've started doing it, it's easier to continue than it is to start in the first place. There's that huge spike to get over where your brain is going, let's not do anything. That's just flump. But once you're up to hundreds of books a year, once you're reading broadly, finding those targets that are good, that are worthwhile, that are better than just being able to read what you want, when you want, see a book and go, I'd like to read that. Be given a book and read it. And I don't even need a challenge to finish difficult books because I find it very hard not to finish a book. My number one reason for not finishing a book is that I borrow it from the library, I run out of time and I can't renew it. So I can't really think of any challenges that work for me because I don't need to challenge myself to read. I don't need to overcome obstacles to reading. But 
that isn't to say that challenges in themselves are a bad thing or that I won't, as I said, start discover a challenge that actually has some value to me. So that's me rambling for a bit. Toodaloo.